One is the immaculate culmination of years of refinement of the design on which it's based. The other, a daring rework of that same design to create something new. Both came out of this beautiful man's skull, but which is the better game? Welcome to Game Wars, that thing where I compare two similar games head to head to see which one is objectively better based on science and shit. And for episode one, we have an absolute fucking showdown between two of the best games ever created. Elden Ring versus Sekiro. The way this works is we compare two similar games based on categories that are important to the design of said games. In this case, Elden Ring vs. Sekiro, those categories are going to be 1. Combat System 2. Difficulty and Fairness 3. Boss Design and 4. Level Design And at the end we give each game a percentage rating out of 100, which is functionally the same as rating it out of 10, but I am my own unique woman. Okay. Let me start by stating the obvious. These are both from software games, meaning by default they have better combat systems than any other action RPGs. But just because we're basically talking LeBron versus Jordan doesn't mean that one isn't slightly better than the other. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's break down why first. Variety. At first glance it appears that Elden Ring wins this subcategory by a mile. You have a choice of like 8 different weapon types and an average of around 6 variants of said types in the game. But after messing around with almost all of them, I found that they play way more similar to each other than expected. Say you're using curved swords for example, you'll be approaching encounters the same way as somebody using straight swords. Say you're using colossal swords, you approach encounters the same way as somebody using great hammers and to some extent even great swords. The only truly unique weapon class in the game is staves, and if you use magic just know that King Mizzy is very disappointed in you, you fucking casual. <laughs> I'm just kidding, play these games however you want and fuck anyone who tells you that you're playing them wrong. Anyways. The wide variety of weapons in Elden Ring is appreciated, even if they do play similar to each other, the weapon arts and talismans allow for enough variety to make each type viable and fun. Now let's look at Sekiro. At first glance it appears that you have almost no variety. You have one primary weapon for the entire game. Where Sekiro chooses to differentiate is with the shinobi prosthetic. Almost every boss encounter in the game is designed to be affected by at least one of the variants, sometimes more, and there's only a couple exceptions. For example, the Lady Butterfly fight is made faster and easier by throwing the Ninja Star at her when she does her high wire act, causing her grab to be interrupted, or using the spear on the Guardian Ape in Phase 2 to pull the Centipede out for huge posture damage. That being said, you have to experiment in order to find these things out. Where this system falters in Sekiro is for the first few hours of the game, the prosthetic is fucking worthless, unless you find the Fire Barrel, which is in a really obscure spot, causing a lot of people to just kind of forget about the prosthetic in general for their entire playthrough. They should have made the fire barrel a lot easier to find so that everybody could have used it against the chain ogre and realized that this thing is extremely useful if used correctly. So on one side you have Elden Ring with plenty of variety on the surface which narrows in scope the more you understand the game, and on the other, Sekiro, which does the opposite, appearing very restricted at the beginning and becoming more varied the better you understand the game. Both systems have their strengths and weaknesses, and I find myself reluctant to give either game the point here considering how close it is and how dependent it'll be on the player themselves. Uh, let's just call this one 1-1 one, one and move on. When Sekiro first came out, I remember how bullshit everybody thought it was, myself included. This is because we all hit that dodge button more than Amber Turd hit Johnny Depp and didn't deflect a fucking thing. Once it clicked with me that that just isn't how you play Sekiro, the game suddenly became not a piece of shit. But Fanta, did the game become easy once you figured it out? Are you on fucking glue? No, this game is extremely hard, but it's also extremely fair. If you know the fights in this game, you can do them flawless every time. Don't get me wrong, it takes a ton of practice to do it on each one, but it is doable. The reason I bring this up is because Elden Ring does not share this strength. Some of the boss's attacks in Endgame hit consecutively so fast or for so long that sometimes damage just becomes completely unavoidable. And since bosses at endgame deal such insane damage, taking one or two hits can shred you instantly. The worst offender without question is the Elden Beast. It doesn't even have to chain attacks to become unavoidable, all it has to do is this stupid shit. What? what? Who, who did this? I want names. Furthermore, the difficulty curve in Sekiro is much more satisfying, starting at pretty hard with Gyobu and gradually elevating to fuck you at Fire Demon, who I find way harder than Ishim by the way, but I'm getting off track. Point is, Elden Ring's difficulty curve looks a little bit more like this. Not very curve-like, ladies and gentlemen. Now, obviously Elden Ring is like four times the size of Sekiro and much less linear. That along with the differences in how you level in the two games makes Elden Ring much harder to balance, and they still manage to do a passable job of it while keeping the insane size and freedom of the game, which is extremely impressive in itself. 
Regardless of my respect for From Software for pulling off a game of Elden Ring's size, there's no denying that Sekiro is the much more balanced game. But what about the level of difficulty itself? My first instinct was just to say that Sekiro is the harder game, but it's not really that simple. Sekiro is the harder game if you understand the tools that Elden Ring offers, but if you don't, Elden Ring can seem just as hard. The age-old argument that people make who don't understand these games is that they need a quote-unquote easy mode, failing to realize that there are about 20 in Elden Ring specifically. They just aren't in the menus. <laughs> Sorry, that sounded really salty. That, <laughs> that argument really annoys me. But in all seriousness, I have seen spirit summons solo every main boss in this game. In contrast, you can do every fight with a big-ass sword and no armor, and it becomes really hard again. Not to mention hundreds of things in between that all offer different levels of challenge. And if all else fails, just overlevel the shit out of your tarnished and one-shot everything, that's always an option. These quote-unquote difficulty settings are present in every game in the Soulsborne series. Aside from Sekiro. Sure, you can use different prosthetic tools that offer different advantages in specific fights, but because of the way leveling works in this game, you are going into that boss fight either at proper level or underleveled, whether you like it or not, and you're not cheesing his ass with magic bit. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the last one. What system you find more fair is going to come down to how you view fairness in video games in general. If you mean fair as in the game gives you plenty of ways to progress, then Elden Ring is the clear winner. If you mean fair as in you're on proper footing compared to the boss, then Sekiro takes the cake. I personally give it to Sekiro here, but my opinion isn't more valid than anybody else's. Unless you're reviewing this game without even finishing them, in that case your opinion is less valid than fuckwits that think masks are going to suffocate them. Well. Maybe not less valid, but pretty fucking close. But anyways, one point for each game, I guess. <laughs> now let's get into the category that one game objectively did better than the other. Boss design. In my opinion, the bosses in Sekiro are much better on average than in Elden Ring. When I look at Elden Ring's roster, only a few stand out as truly S-tier fights, that being Godfrey, Morgoth, Radagon, and the best fight in the game in my opinion, Radon. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of amazing fights in this game, and very few that I truly didn't enjoy at all, but Sekiro has such a strong roster that it's almost unfair. The S tier in that game, in my opinion, are Genichiro 2, Ishin the Sword Saint, uh, the Emma Ishin combo, Guardian Ape, Divine Dragon, I know the fight's super simple, but it's also really fun, and I mean, just look at this guy, it's really fucking cool. I would even say Gyobu belongs on that list, and then the two best fights in the game in my opinion are Owl Father and Great Shinobi Owl. That is a stupid amount of top tier bosses for one game. Sekiro also has a few stinkers though, don't get me wrong. Snake Eyes is a fucking disaster, and Palace Bull sucks my ass like a vacuum powered by a black hole. Ape Duo isn't the best, and Folding Screen Monkeys are the embodiment of fucking tedium, but other than that, all good. I think the reason for this is, again, because the devs had way more control over the state in which you fight these bosses, allowing them to be way more tuned. To illustrate what I mean, let's look at Estelle, specifically its gravity slam attack. If you do this fight with a slow weapon like a colossal sword and it starts this attack when you're in a mid-swing, you don't have enough time to escape the AoE, even if you immediately sprint after your animation finishes. And this attack one-shots under 45 vigor, by the way. This is just one example of a boss mechanic not working with certain options the player has to approach the fight. The visual variety of bosses, on the other hand, skews more in Elden Ring's favor. But the funny thing about that is, Sekiro still stand out more in my mind despite playing through Elden Ring five times in the last month and not playing Sekiro for almost a year prior to getting footage for this video. I think the reason for this is because the movesets the bosses have in Sekiro have way more variety on average than Elden Ring's. It took my dumbass a while before I realized why, but what I came up with is it comes down to the way that you avoid damage in each game. The deflection system is so much faster and more controlled than dodge rolling that it allows the devs to implement a much more varied moveset in a short period of time. For example, look at this attack from Genichiro. You just dealt with like 5 swings in the same amount of time it takes to roll once in Elden Ring, the result being one of two things. Either the combo bosses can do in Elden Ring are way less complex than in Sekiro, or, they have the same level of complexity, but it takes way too fucking long to finish because the devs need to give you enough time to roll within said combo. Or, I guess, option three, which is just damage becomes unavoidable, and, uh, you know, they, they did do that one a few times. At the end of the day, I give boss design to Sekiro hands down. But, if Sekiro has the stronger boss lineup, Elden Ring without question has the better world design. I think this one's pretty obvious, so I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time on it, but I definitely did want to praise Elden Ring here. 
Elden Ring manages to take a world the size of fucking Neptune and divide it into distinct regions that are not only vastly different from one another, but also fit together so seamlessly that the world feels real despite being filled with fucking spider hands. Who the fuck made these? These are the worst thing. Not only is each region all its own, but the enemies that populate them help tell a story about the area you're exploring. Nothing feels out of place, and in a world this massive, something really should. Don't get me wrong, Sekiro has amazing level design as well, and a lot of what I said for Elden Ring can be applied to it too, just to less of a scale. But one thing Sekiro can't compete in is the variety of the zones. It makes sense because of the setting of the game, but everything looks so similar that aside from Fountainhead, there really aren't that many jaw-dropping moments like there are in Elden Ring. At least from an environment perspective, the bosses are still a spectacle. I mean, when this asshole stood back up and scooped his head up like a fucking briefcase, I collectively lost all of my shit. Regardless, Sekiro can't compete with the variety and size of Elden Ring. But Elden Ring's size wouldn't matter if not for the most impressive thing about the game in my opinion. The fact that every inch of it feels significant. They wasted very little space in a world so big that any other developer would have folded under the weight of it. Not to say that Sekiro feels empty, it doesn't, it's just way smaller. The only thing that annoyed me about Elden Ring's level design is the fact that they came up with a brilliant solution to runbacks with Stakes America, allowing them to keep the integrity of the levels intact while also not being a fucking piece of shit? They came up with this and then elected not to use it for certain parts of the game, like, what the fuck, King Mizzy, I don't get it, do you just hate fun? But even with this little speed bump in level design, I still give it to Elden Ring by a mile. FromSoft games have always been known for doing two things extremely well, boss fights and level design slash lore. And the people who love these games love them for both reasons. So which one's the better game? Well, it depends where you fall on that spectrum. Do you enjoy exploring the intricately crafted worlds they create more than fighting the bosses themselves? Or do you just play these games moving from amazing boss fight to amazing boss fight as quickly as possible? I'm sure most of us line somewhere in the middle, but I assume like me you lean more to one side of that fence than the other. Well, if you're more of the explorer type, then Elden Ring is the game for you. If you lean more towards just enjoying the bosses, then Sekiro takes it hands down. I've been trying to decide which of these games I like better for the last month now, and I honestly don't know. It's so close I don't even really think it matters, and if you want my opinion, it's that you should play both of these fucking games right now if you haven't. I mean, you, you could pay $200 a piece for these games, and that would be a good deal, but you can buy both of these bitches for like $60 a piece. And I know that's not cheap, but set some dough aside for King Mizzy when you get the chance, that's all I'm saying. It's a tie, bitch. Video over.